Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of the many publications brought out by a Black Library and giving you our thoughts on the book audio drama whatever it happens to be now i will say that we will try to keep this review to as spoiler free as possible though there will obviously be points where we talk about things happening in the book we will try to keep away from saying any of the major plot points so you can go and read this book for yourself we'll just give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it is something you may be interested in so we'll use this video to instruct you on maybe is this sort of going to be a book that you would like to see with that all said and out the way let's get cracking on let's talk a little bit about the book that we have reviewed this time in today's black library review we're going to be checking out Farside crisis of faith by field kelly now this is the first of a couple of books so far that i know of uh that follow the story of commander Farsight in his early years in the tower empire this is before he turns renegade uh all of that stuff so some really early history for a major character in the tower empire now this one is really interesting it's narrated by both andrew winkot alan and Helen McAlpine. Um, a really, really fun dynamic. I like when they bring in voice actors that, you know, are from the two different genders that are apparent in the book. It really makes for some interesting uh, listening and just sort of adds that a little bit more, almost gives it, you know, that audio drama sort of feel without fully going into it. But uh, really excited. I've heard so many good things about this. So let's get cracking on and talk about it. And so our story. The Tau are a mysterious alien race in the Warhammer 40k universe. They're diametrically opposed to the Imperium of Man in every possible way, in their mastery of technology and indeed many of the technology they use, such as drones and artificial intelligence. Their methods of warfare are not the sort of grind, you know, grind them with a million bodies. Um, they're much more sort of strike and fade and the patient hunter, uh, a lot of that. And also their social structure as well. They have a clear social structure and there's no real, I guess, slave caste, if you will, like there is in the Imperium of Man. Yet, however, in galactic terms, they are a relatively young race. They sort of sprang out of nowhere, if you know your early Tau lore. And they're pretty naive when it comes to the manipulations of chaos and indeed many other things as well. They really don't understand a lot about the galaxy. They're a small portion of it that they control. Um, and they're highly advanced, highly, you know, powerful. They just don't know much of what the galaxy has to offer. They're, you know, looking at everything with bright eyes, um, hoping, you know, everything can become, uh, everyone can become good friends at the end of the day. And so when young promising Commander Farsight, uh, is promoted to lead a crusade across the Damocles Gulf after the Damocles Crusade, which was the initial sort of incursion and imperial fight back against the Tower. Um, the Tower Empire's lost colonies are what they're aiming to reclaim from that Damocles Crusade. The mood is one of optimism. With their mighty fleet and superior weapons and machines, how can this endeavor possibly fail for the Tower? However, despite a parade of early successes, Commander Firesight soon faces enemies he wasn't even anticipating to be fighting against, and finds not only his courage, but also his very soul tested to the very limit. But what is this book's purpose? And well, as you might figure, this is to really introduce us to Commander Farsight like never before. Um, this introduces him in, you know, the early stages of his career, of his sort of existence as I guess the far sight we know, or at least becoming the far sight we know from the you know, current Warhammer 40k law, it gives us a nice in-depth look um, at his rise to power, telling us a lot of his sort of past history, his connections, how he views um, his compatriots, his mentors, and other people in society around him. And again, you know, it really does flesh out that background story of him a lot, while also setting up, you know, the start of, I guess, what is going to be Farsight's most important arc in his main part of the story, which is setting up the Farsight Enclaves, becoming, you know, that uh, rogue sort of um, commander that he ends up becoming. And so, of course, our main character is 
Commander Fire. So there's a host of really good secondary characters like poor Malkor. Uh, there's some Space Marine main characters that pose as enemies. There's uh, some turncoats. And, you know, we even get looks at other characters like Commander Shadow Sun, like Alvar, um, and even things like Commander Farsight and Shadow Sun's mentor as well. Uh, so there's really a nice look at a bunch of different characters, but obviously Farsight is central and focal for 99% of this story, um, which is really cool. Like, like I said, he's an important figure for Tau, and it's really nice to get a good look at him. And so what does change about him over the course of the story? And like I said at the start, this is before the Farsight we know. This is, you know, a very young and upcoming uh, commander that's given his first real major assignment. Like, he's leading a reclamation crusade. He, you know, more than just a single fight or something like that. This is massive for him. And so we start to see that journey, and definitely we start to see, I guess, the first glimmers of what he will become, uh, and the character we know in the modern Warhammer 40k universe. And so what does the book do? Well, first of all, I really love how it plays up the Tower's naivety of the galaxy, and of chaos, and of so many other things, you know. It really is so nice to see that just sort of play up how really naive they are about the galaxy, um... And different things that we'll get to see. Like I don't want to spoil too much, but definitely like how they view particular races. Chaos mostly is just really, really interesting. Um, but a really key feature I think of this book is consistent and strong characters. I feel like the characters develop over the course of time. They definitely have you know arcs where they change and they meld, but. Each character, that especially uh, the ones that maybe turn into bad guys, definitely uh, have a strong arc to them that really lends to, you know, you can see why they've sort of done what they've done and how they become what they are by the end of the story. Um, there's no sort of leaps or no sort of guesses. Everything is really tightly put together and really makes a lot of sense. Who would like this book? It's pretty obvious. This is for Tower players. If you are interested in the Tower as a faction, this is a fantastic look at the Tower. But also, like this is a book I would recommend to anyone who's into 40k. I think this was one of the best stories I've read of recent. Uh, really, really enjoyable. I had heard lots of good things about it um, when I was asking, you know, around of what to sort of read next. This was highly recommended. Um, Tower players, you will love it. And if you just like 40k lore, you'll definitely enjoy it as well. But in summary, like, like I said, strong characters and a really good pace to the book make this a very enjoyable read or listen however you like to consume your Black Library content. Uh, this was definitely a really fun listen. Um, you know, it was over 10 hours of a listen. I think I listened to it in like two days. I really enjoyed it that much. Um, solid 8 out of 10 for me. I look forward to eventually getting to the next book in the series sometime in the near future. If you've read, listened, or heard about this, want to know more, let us know down in the comments what you thought of it, what you want to know. Uh, love to chat to people about this some more. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And also drop us a comment down below letting us know what you enjoyed about the video. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our community here at Sinful Gaming, you can do so on our Discord server, which is linked down in the video's description. If you'd like to help support the channel more, you can do so either by Patreon or YouTube members or going to our Teespring store, all of which are linked down in the video's description as well. As a special thank you to our patrons and YouTube members, we'd like to give you all a shout out. So, a special Patreon shout out to Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lyle, Al Ron Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domia, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Derek, Bloobs, Benjamin Suarez, and Red Martin. As thank you to our YouTube members as well Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink, Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, John Castle, and Davis Wire. Special thanks also to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork you see on the channel, like you can see pictured here on this slide. Thank you once again for watching, everyone. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the Grey. Ciao for now.